In Ukraine, Center 5 has appeared, a new camp for Russian occupiers who are captured. The peculiarity is that special conditions have been created there for prisoners of war with wounds and various diseases. The I Want to Live project noted that the number of Russians surrendering to the Ukrainian armed forces each month significantly exceeds the number of those whom Russia returns as part of exchanges. Therefore, prisoner of war detention facilities in Ukraine are filling up very quickly. All of them could have been home a long time ago as part of a large humanitarian exchange of all for all, but their return is not a priority for their so-called homeland, noted the coordinators of I Want to Live. In addition, for the third year now, the Russian Federation has refused to comply with the requirements of the Geneva Conventions and has blocked the creation of mixed medical commissions to carry out the repatriation of the wounded and sick. In Center 5, the conditions for the occupiers meet the standards of international humanitarian law. The enemy soldiers have separate sleeping places, three hot meals a day, showers with hot water and access to medical care. This camp, like others, can be visited by various international observers and media. Ukraine maintains the greatest possible openness in matters of treatment of prisoners of war and adheres to its obligations under the Geneva Conventions. We constantly demand that the Russian side treat Ukrainian prisoners in the same way, noted representatives of I Want to Live. However, Russia continues to use prisoners as a tool of pressure and bargaining, ignoring not only Ukraine's humanitarian initiatives, but also basic norms of morality and humanity. As reported on October the 16th, relatives of the defenders of Ukraine captured by the Russian occupation army met with representatives of the European Commission and the European Parliament in Brussels. They spoke about the terrible conditions in which the Ukrainians are being held in captivity. The Ukrainian delegation emphasized that Russia does not allow monitoring missions to the places where the occupiers are holding Ukrainian military and civilian prisoners. Representatives of the Ukrainian delegation spoke about the critical condition of Ukrainian military and civilians in Russian captivity, about the need to find a way to avoid a humanitarian crisis in the absence of the aggressor country's reluctance to allow monitoring missions to places where Ukrainian citizens are being held on Russian territory and in territories it occupies. The headquarters noted, NATO's Security Assistance and Training for Ukraine Center will soon be launched at a German military base in Weisbaden. The facility already hosts U.S. command making preparations for the deployment of long-range missiles aimed at countering Russia, Neza Visimaya Gazeta writes, citing new NATO Secretary General Mark Root. NATO decided to create the Security Assistance and Training for Ukraine Center at the bloc's July summit. Washington is expected to hand all of its related powers over to the facility before the U.S. presidential election. The New York Times explains that the Security Assistance and Training for Ukraine will continue operating even if Republican candidate Donald Trump, who said earlier that the U.S. needed to stop giving any aid to the Ukrainian army, is re-elected president. The new Secretary General of the North Atlantic Alliance believes that the temporary deployment of U.S. long-range missiles to Germany starting in 2026 will be an additional tool to counter Russia. U.S. President Joe Biden and German Chancellor Olaf Scholz agreed on the missile deployment on the sidelines of the NATO summit in July. Root expects that U.S. long-range missiles will remain in Europe until Germany, France and some other European countries develop similar weapons of their own. However, it's hard to imagine this happening anytime soon because because other NATO countries have relatively small defense budgets compared to the U.S. While supporting Kiev, NATO is working with the U.S. on its own aggressive plans, which are aimed against Russia. This is what Mark Root's statements are about. Moscow has repeatedly said that it will give a tit-for-tat response to such actions. Russian Lieutenant General Yuri Netkachev, a military expert, pointed out, the analyst noted that Moscow had strategic allies and partners ready to support its armed forces. This is particularly evident from Russian Defense Minister Andrei Belosov's recent visit to China. NATO is definitely raising tensions by holding nuclear drills near Russia's border. Alexei Zuravlayov, deputy chairman of the Russian State Duma Committee on Defense, said, Notably, Finland, which maintained neutrality for over 50 years, is taking part in the exercise for the first time, he noted. This means that U.S. nuclear weapons will be brought to the country, which has never hosted them before. 
The thing to keep in mind is that these weapons are equipped with gliding modules and can be launched from NATO aircraft without crossing our border. That said, the threat of an attack from Finland will significantly increase, the lawmaker emphasized. Israeli military forces discovered Russian weaponry during searches of Hezbollah militants' bases in southern Lebanon. The found weapons are described as state-of-the-art, according to an interview with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. The head of the Israeli government emphasized in his conversation with the media that, according to a UN Security Council resolution from 2006, only the Lebanese army is allowed to possess weapons in the area south of the crucial Litani River. However, in this area, Hezbollah has dug hundreds of tunnels and caches where we have just found the quantity of state-of-the-art Russian weapons, Netanyahu stated. He added that a new civil war in Lebanon would be a tragedy. It is certainly not our aim to provoke one. Israel does not intend to interfere in Lebanon's internal affairs, the Israeli Prime Minister assured in his conversation with Le Figaro discussing the IDF's operations in Lebanon. According to Netanyahu, the sole aim of the Israeli side is to allow our citizens living along the Lebanon frontier to go home and feel safe. In this interview, the Israeli Prime Minister did not specify which particular Russian weapons were discovered by the Israel Defense Forces in Hezbollah's tunnels in Lebanon. At the moment, Netanyahu has so far refrained from making direct accusations against Moscow or supplying weapons to Hezbollah. However, the fact that the Israeli leader has begun to openly emphasize that the militants were found to have Russian weapons indicates that he is no longer as loyal to the Putin regime as skeptics previously reasonably believed. It is possible that if Russia continues to supply weapons to Hezbollah, it will run into an international scandal and the Israeli leadership will finally understand and admit that it is not only the Iranian regime of the Ayatollahs, the Syrian dictator Assad, the Palestinian Hamas and the Lebanese militants who are fighting against them, but also the Russian regime.